Hi, my name is Stuart Lynch, and in this video, I'm going to introduce you to an in-app purchase framework that you can use in your iOS projects, and it's called Adapty. It is extremely easy to use, and we'll cover the entire process in this series of videos. In this video, I'll show you how you can configure the App Store Connect to enable subscriptions for your application. And I'll show you how you can then configure Adapty to connect to the App Store and manage the purchase on your behalf. Then, before we move on to designing our interface on our app, we'll test to make sure that we have completed the configuration properly. In the second video, I'll show you how you can monetize your app with a subscription in-app purchase and design and implement a paywall within your app to provide your users with the opportunity to take advantage of that. We'll test on a real device with a sandbox user that we can create in the App Store Connect. In the third video of this series, I'll show you how you can add multiple paywalls and using a remote configuration in Adapty, update your paywall's appearance without having to submit a new version of your app to the App Store. And with a pro Adapty account, you can even do powerful A-B testing. I love getting your feedback, so tap the thumbs up button if you enjoyed this video and leave a comment below. Make sure you subscribe to the video and ring that bell to get notifications of new videos. And if you want to support my work, you can buy me a coffee. There's a starter app for this project, and I'll not be touching much of the code at all. The purpose of this tutorial is to show you how you can add in-app subscriptions to any one of your applications using the Adapty SDK for iOS. It's really easy to implement. The demo app I've here is called Adapty Contacts, and it's written in SwiftUI. And in the preview here, you see I'm displaying some sample contacts, and these are displayed in the preview only. If I run my app in the simulator now, you'll see that I have no contacts, but I can add as many as I like. To get started and get a feel for the app, I'd like you to create three, but no more than three. Why? Because adding more than three contacts is going to be a premium feature that will require either a monthly or an annual subscription. So we're going to be adding that functionality to our app. Currently, we are unlimited. But when the user tries to create a fourth contact, he'll be prompted to make the purchase. If you exit the app and then launch again, you'll see that the data persists. It's just being saved as a JSON file in the Applications Documents directory. Feel free to explore the code. We want to present an in-app purchase screen if the user tries to create more than three contacts. Also, right now when I tap on this Help button, all it shows is some information about Adapty. If the user is not yet subscribed, I like to provide that ability on this screen as well, even if they have no contacts or only one or two. Now before we get started, you must do two things. First, you need to change the bundle identifier to match your own organization. And secondly, you must register the app in App Store Connect, as we'll be testing purchases on a sandbox user. Now, I've already done this on my account, where you see I have quite a number of apps, including my test app for Adapty. For this app, all I've done is register my bundle ID, as you can see here. You can find Adapty at Adapty.io. Adapty's claim is that you can integrate in-app purchases within an hour. And if you have pro access, you can double your revenue in three months with A-B testing for paywalls. So let's see if we can do this within an hour. You don't need a premium account to get started. The free tier will give you access to the iOS SDK for in-app purchases and subscription analytics, and it's free until you make over 10000 a month. I've already created an account on Adapty and verified their claim regarding speed and ease of implementation. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to do that. First, I'll create a new app, and I'll give it the same name as my iOS app, Adapty Contacts. I can choose whatever I want for the category. And I'm not going to bother with an icon for now. If I click on App Settings, I'll check that this app will be included in the App Store Small Bundle program. Now if I go to the iOS DK, 
I see that the SDK status is showing not installed on my app. Now I can go to the Docs section and drill down to the iOS section. Here I see that I have two options for installing the SDK, either by using CocoaPods or Swift Package Manager. And I'm a big fan of Swift Package Manager, so I'm going to choose it, and I'll copy that URL. Back in Xcode, I can add the Swift package, and I'll paste in that URL into the search field, and I'll add the package that's found. Now I'll need that bundle URL, so I'm going to copy it, and I'm going to return back to the Adapti site. And here I'll paste that bundle ID, and then go back to the General tab, and I'll copy the public SDK key and return back to Xcode once more. In the app entry point, I can import Adapty and then I'll build my app. Then when we present our first screen, I'll add an on appear modifier and I'll execute the Adapty's activate function and that requires that copied SDK key as a string. Let me run once more and have it activate upon launch. Now if I return to the app page for this app, and again to the iOS SDK tab, I can refresh the page and see that I've made the connection. Back in App Store Connect, I can go to the subscription section and scroll down where I need to create an app-specific shared secret. I'll copy this to the clipboard and return back to Adapty. In the iOS SDK and Adapty settings, I'll paste this into the App Store Connect shared secret field. Back again in App Store Connect, we're going to be creating a monthly and an annual subscription for our premium feature. All subscriptions must be part of a group, and users can only subscribe to one subscription in a group at a time. So we'll have to create a subscription group, and we're going to call it Premium. You need to create at least one App Store localization, so I'll keep mine for the US, and I'll call it Premium Access. Next, I'll create a new subscription. Now this will be a monthly subscription, and for the product ID, it has to be unique across all of your apps. And so I like to use a combination of a reference for the app name, the feature name, the duration, and the price. I need to specify the subscription duration, which is monthly, and then add a price, which is $1.99 in Canadian funds. You can change the prices for each locale if desired. Again, you'll need to add at least one App Store localization. And this is the information that will be displayed in the App Store. We need to now create an annual subscription, and the process is basically the same, the difference being that it will have a one-year duration with its own unique ID. I'll return once more to Adapty, and I'll copy the App Store server notification URL from the App Settings page. And then finally, we'll switch back to App Store Connect, and on the General tab, App Information section, I'll scroll down to the bottom and locate the App Store server notifications area. I'm going to paste in 
to the setup fields for both the production and sandbox server URLs that copied URL. But make sure that you select version 1 notifications in both cases. Now we need to link up these subscriptions in Adapti for our app. So select the products and paywall section. The first tab, access levels, corresponds to my subscription group, which is premium monthly and annual subscriptions. Both provide the same level of access. We could create a new level if we wanted and call it full access, but Premium is already created by default, so I'm going to stick with that. It's not a coincidence why I called my subscription group Premium in the first place. For each subscription, we need to create a product. And this is similar to our subscription, and the key is that we have to make sure that we use the same App Store product ID that we created for our subscriptions in App Store Connect. Give your product a name. That's a reference only, so how about monthly subscription? Specify the period, so in my first case, that will be monthly. And the access level, I'll just use that default premium that was created by default. For the App Store product ID, just to make sure that I get it right, I'm going to switch back to App Store Connect and then go to my subscription screen for my app. If I open the Premium Subscriptions group, I can copy the product ID for my monthly subscription. Now, I can paste that into Adapti and save it. But first, let me fix that typo. Now, I'm going to repeat exactly the same process for an annual subscription, making sure that I go back to App Store Connect to copy exactly that ID. The next thing we need to do is to create a paywall. And this provides us with all of the products that we want to include on our subscription screen in our app. Now for me, this will include both product options. So for the name, let me just use Premium Paywall. The paywall ID has to be unique. So let me call it Premium PW for Premium Paywall. And now I can add both products to the paywall, and once that's done, I'll save and publish. I'll come back to the remote config section later, as this is really interesting and powerful. Now the final thing I want to do in this video is to test that everything is set up properly, and that Xcode can communicate with Adapti, and Adapti with App Store Connect. So what we want to do is to see that we can get our paywall. Now I could have many paywalls, so this function that we call will fetch an array of them. You can check the documentation for Adapti and see that there is a Adapti function called get paywalls. And this is the completion handler version and you're free to use that. However, we now have a new concurrency method in iOS that uses asynchronous async and await. So I'm going to use that and fortunately Adapti allows us to use that. So for testing purposes then, when our contacts list view first appears, I'm going to attach a asynchronous task modifier to the navigation view. And then I want to call that function. But first, I'll need to import Adapti into this view. Now, I can type Adapti and see all of the different functions that are available to me. The first one is the one that I want, which is a throwing asynchronous version of the get paywalls function that will return a get paywalls result. Now, since this is an asynchronous function and it throws, I'll mark it with try await and I'll assign the result to a constant that I'll call result. Now, since it's a throwing function, I'm going to have to wrap it in a do catch block. The result has a paywalls property, and I want to find the first one where the ID is our paywall ID. And this is optional, so I'll do a guard let on this 
and just return if not found. So the results paywall first, or the paywall developer ID. I know it should be paywall ID, but this is a legacy thing. If it's equal to, and we make sure that we get that from our paywall setup to make sure we don't have any typos. So it's equal to premium PW, then we're okay. If it doesn't find it, we'll print to the console so I can troubleshoot the error before returning. Well, now that I have the paywall, I can iterate through all of its products. And products, again, are our subscriptions. And we'll just print out some information. Let's make sure we spell it correctly. Let me print out for verification purposes the localized title. And then I'll want the localized price. But localized price is optional. So I'll need to provide an optional for this as well. I'll just use an empty string. If the function itself fails and throws an error, I'll just print the localized description itself. Now test. I can run this in the simulator. In the console, I see my two different products along with the localized price. You may wonder why the prices aren't the ones that I set up in App Store Connect. Well, I set it up for Canadian prices, the $1.99 and the $19.99. And my simulator is set for the United States. So that explains the difference in price. This is what the local U.S. citizens would pay. Well, that's enough for one video. In the next video, I'll build out our user interface and create a purchase manager class to handle purchases and restoration of purchases and check whether or not the user has already made purchases so that we don't ask them again. And for this, we'll need to have a sandbox user account and test on a real phone.